I'm Tim Copeland and I'm the president of Copeland Furniture. We're located in Bradford, Vermont, on the east side of the state, right on the Connecticut River, which runs between Vermont and New Hampshire. Vermont's the Green Mountain State. We believe in the concept of stewardship and sustainability. It's a cultural value um, that, that we have lived in in, in Vermont. It's not a, a recent political statement, it's just the way things are. A lot of woodlots are in families that in some cases are still in the same family that date all the way back to the Revolutionary War. And what you've got is kind of a long-term ethic of stewardship of resources. If you're going to hold the land and pass it on to, your, to the next generation, um, you want to take care of it. The timber for which Vermont is best known is maple. Um, a lot of the maple that we get comes from Vermont. We've also worked with a forestry um, consulting firm in Vermont uh, who in turn works with landowners um, who want to see the, the timber off of their land used in a responsible way. Not only do they want to take good care of their lands, but they also want to, they'd like to see their timber used for a Vermont made product not put in a container and shipped halfway around the, the world for someone in the Far East to use. And as a consequence, um, the maple that we're purchasing now is coming from FSC certified woodlots around the general region in which we work. Almost all of it within 100, 100 miles. Our company is FSC, Forest Stewardship Council Certified and the forest stewardship certification process goes all the way back to the land owner and then to the sawmill and then to the broker and then to the, then to the end manufacturing user so that there is an auditable chain of custody. And by going through the process of documenting the way we operate it, it allows us to make a statement with substance to the marketplace. Conventional finishes are, as you may know, made of 60 to 70 percent solvent. And the entire role of the solvent is simply to carry the resin onto the furniture and then evaporate and go into the atmosphere. Not only that, but um, the plant applying the finish needs to heat uh, outside air and uh, push it into the building so that they can exhaust air. So you've got kind of a double whammy. Water-based finish is going to drastically reduce the emission side of, um, of finishing. And um, it's also going to uh, reduce the amount of air makeup, of, make, of heated makeup air that we need to make. We've been working with two um, um, labs uh, to develop water-based finishes. My suspicion is, is that within five years, all of our top coats are going to be water-based. For years, um, we have heated our plant with a unique cogeneration setup whereby we ran diesel generators to generate our own electricity and took all of the, um, the, the heat loss, the normal heat loss off the engine to heat the plant. So we were getting our oil to do double duty. We are now in the process, though, of converting and going to the next step, and that is burning all, burning entirely wood waste to heat the plant. And in addition to, to, um, to heating our own plant, um, we are grinding and pelletizing and bagging the wood waste for use in the local retail market. And um, I think that what we figure is it'll probably, the amount that we have available to sell into the community will probably displace about 70,000 gallons of heating oil used in the area. And it's kind of a neat, um, kind of a neat loop if you think about it. Um, we bring in locally grown lumber, or we're making furniture out of it, um, and the parts that are left over are going into into pelletized fuel, which is heating houses in in the local region, and displacing just that much imported oil. I think people that we talk to appreciate that it's not greenwash, that it's it's the real deal. It's the way we operate.